was actually quite keen to just ask everybody if they wanted to continue. We've still got uh, four, uh, well, three other questions to answer. So if you would like to, um, we will continue. If not, um, what we will be doing in March is looking at abstraction. And I'm going to start almost from the John Zachman approach, and then we're going to look at the different ways of abstracting using data models, different techniques, and things like that. So if everyone's interested, we will continue uh, one more week on DMMA. And what I've got on my right hand side is just to show you, I have shared this link with quite a few people. This is the current uh, DMMA Google Drive. Um, we have we have the sample analysis, uh, the presentation that you can use, the DMMA questionnaire that that I'll show you as well. Um, we have been going through it, and then there's an NDMO. Um, there's an NDMO uh, file here as well that contains the game plan and it contains a whole lot of the different resources. But uh, in that NDMO is a DMMA for the NDMO regulation that we discussed yesterday. So anyone who's interested, um, that could that would be great. Uh, yes, I'll um, let me do that right now. Let's. Uh, Let's post that link in into the chat right now. Um, link, get link. Okay, copy the link. Done. Sorry about that. Just getting the link there. So if you'd like it, you can. You can use it, you can access it right now and you can download it and then follow on, follow there. Okay, um, so that's that's where we are. Um, okay, so here's here's the here's the presentation for today. So today we we've been through this whole scenario, we now getting to what we refer to as the, the core questions. We're going through these five questions. And then right at the end, we'll show again how those questions give us the answers to these two areas, which is uh, from a um, basically from a business point of view. Are we capable of managing your data? And then how capable are we? Um, so it's just one. So from your current requirements, uh, are we capable? And then how capable are we? How, how much more do we need to improve? And then we go back up into the vision and value and purpose of a DMMA. Okay, so that's where we're focusing our efforts at the moment. Um, all right, so we then we then go into these core questions. We did the what is and has been happening uh, last week, and now we want to talk about why is it happening. And I was actually glad to see uh, Hisham's question or post on LinkedIn to talk about culture and change. And this is the, the real message of today. It's, it's, it's focusing on these two change and knowledge management. But as I, as I replied to Hisham to say that I do believe that a lot of the cultural issues are mixed up between change and knowledge management. And I'll be sharing a little bit more with that uh, today. OK, so let's go to this slide. This is our question two. And the reason I've got the scale here is defined, which is our level three on the DMMA or that uh, maturity level. We go from a level zero being unaware to define. That's what our first goal is. That's a major jump in where we need to be. Um, and I believe that a lot of the reasons why we don't get there uh, can be related to this change management um, and going up this hierarchy, progressing up the hierarchy. When I interview the students, uh, interview the interviewees, not, not so much the students, um, when we do these assessments, a lot of the times I find people saying, 
Uh, I, I don't know. I've never heard of this. I'm unaware of what's going on. Um, and then there's another level to say, yeah, I can. I see what's happening, but I don't know how it applies to me. So that tells me, talks to me about a desire to do it, to be consistent. And then when we go a level higher in terms of ad hoc, what we're seeing there is that it the success or the consistent consistency of production is dependent on the skills of the individual. And so if you don't have the right skills, you can't always produce it. Um, but if you do, then and and you well experienced, then you probably uh, achieve a great outcome. And and so what's important, the message that's important here is to say that just because you're not defined doesn't mean that the quality of your deliverables are bad. Uh, so please, I'm I'm not saying that you can't produce. Uh, individuals cannot produce um, these deliverables, good quality deliverables, but. It's this level that we're trying to get to, which is shared understanding and behavior. It's almost being able to do uh, this, the, the field of data management and information management in a very consistent, standardized way. So that, for example, we build the data models in the same way. We use the same notations. We build data quality expectations. We measure our quality. We build data lineages. We do data catalogs. Uh, we do master data and reference data in a in a similar way, in a well-defined way, so that everybody knows what needs to be done. And I, I sort of refer to that as a level of emerging practice that we've got a practice to find. We may we may not be very efficient and effective. We may still have wastages and waste within that, but we we progressing we we moving forward and then it moves over from change to knowledge management and there's once we've got this shared understanding and behavior we're now fully into the area of knowledge management okay um and that's where we start looking at efficiency uh, effectiveness are we managed are we reviewing everything are we constantly and continually improving our processes and reducing the waste and then optimizing is where we start to innovate uh, and do things uh, slightly differently, uh, improve the way in which we do things. Um, and there we can see that where we can start applying this to business transformation. OK, so this to me is, is the important thing. And this is almost the first step that I, what I'm suggesting is that we haven't been doing up until now. Up until now, it's a case of here are the results. This is where you're at. Uh, have a nice day. Um, and now you must find ways of tackling where you're not good and, and, and sorting it out. And, and this is where I felt we actually need to show people how to get out of the hole and, and how to progress along this journey. OK, so this is what we're doing today is why? Why? Why is it happening? OK. Again, guys, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask, please shout. I'm happy to stop. I, I do understand that some cases uh, it's quite complex and I may be going through a little bit too quickly. All right, so this is the flow chart that I use in terms of trying to explain this why. OK, so why? Uh, I, I'm basically using two things, change or knowledge management. If we but if we lower than a level or if we but less than or equal to a level two, then I believe we have a change inhibitor. I'm hoping that makes sense. So a change inhibitor is saying that we we have a problem with change and that's affecting our scores. So um, the nice thing about change is there's three areas. It's that enablement. That, that we can enable people, we can engage people, and then we can work in a community. Um, so the first thing we're saying is from an enablement point of view, when you're less than one, you I would I would suggest that you have a lack of awareness and or desire. Um, and the problem that, that we get to is that we may fix the awareness problem. So when we do our ratings, all oh, right, we've got we got a challenge with awareness. People don't understand. Then when they understand, don't think you're out of the woods and you can now jump into level two and three. 
they may not they may not agree with you in terms of that this is an appropriate way of doing it or that they should be doing it. Um, I, I have these problems with master data projects where what we have to convince business and, and the awful situation is that now you have to go and you have to be part of cleaning the addresses. This is not an IT thing. This is not a developer's thing. This is a business thing. And they feel, the initial feeling is, why should I be doing IT's work? And you have to demonstrate to them that, A, a lot of times it's impossible for a developer to get this right, and it needs engagement with the customers, and B, a lot of the times this data that we're getting in can be coming from uh, the entry, the input, the data input during the business processes. And that's where we need business process, business uh, attitudes to be able to change on this thing. And then when we talk about engagement, we, we feel almost the first resistance is people not engaging because they uh, don't have the right ability uh, or they lack reinforcement, they, they're not able to get to that level. And this is sort of one of the things that I wanted to share with you is if we look at this area over here, um, there's quite a detailed view of how do we deal with uh, enablement, getting the awareness right, uh, creative alignment, how do we how do we get ourselves aligned to agree with what we're talking about? Um, and then and then we must make sure that our sponsors and our executives must be sure that change is needed. Okay, so if if we have just a nice idea coming from EIM or the DMO and the CEOs and the business execs are not on board on this thing, it's a it's it is a case of saying, well, sure we need to change, but I don't really I don't recognize how I need to be involved in it, and that we do have to improve what we're doing. There's a big difference between saying yes, uh, we are we know that we have regulatory compliance and it must be done to a case of that's right, and we understand that we need to change and we need to improve on this thing. So how do we go through this? Um, this is certainly in the field of change management. This is uh, typically not my sweet spot in terms of being able to um, get people across this change. I, I'm, I really enjoy doing that creative alignment and, and helping people understand. But then that supporting of the change, managing the employees, making sure that they participate, making sure they engage, that, that becomes um, a little bit harder <laughs> from me, from my point of view. I know there are people like Christine and JG. JG does a great job like this and, and Mr. Bolton. But I, I, I almost feel that what's wrong? Why can't you see it? And let's get a go. Let's get moving. Let's get on to the nice thing. OK, so this is Howard, I think the biggest pro Howard, I think the biggest problem is you're just far too patient. Um, you know, patience <laughs> is one of those things that you just ooze. And uh, I think that's where the real problem is here, is that your your level of patience is just so accommodating that that's why, you know, this part just, sure. you know, doesn't come naturally. Sure. That's, uh, that's good sarcasm, JG. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, point taken. Um, I, I Basically, every year, I, that's about the only thing I try to address is my patience, but maybe one day, maybe one day. Okay, so... We go into supporting the change and then this knowledge on how to change. Ah, there, there I'm happy. Okay. How do we change? How do we get going? How do we how do we get this uh reference data set up? The DQ doing a, a quality assessment. I love that. I love working with people when they when they've got the when when they when they've bitten it and said, I want to get this change. Now now it's now I'm happy. Now I'm now I'm in, in the right place. Um so this is this is the next step is is giving them the information necessary to change so they can say I know how to uh, we can go through like we're doing now in the DMMA we can go through all these different areas okay um, and then we go into this ability skills and behavior this type of area uh, reinforcement um, and then what we've got is is the knowledge inhibitor right. So we could have individuals not conforming to the corporate culture, not believing that it's they need to do it. Uh, then this situation of 
ex uh, the ability to exchange knowledge in these communities um, in a desire to get more knowledge. OK, so we all of us want to be in an area where we are sharing information and we're getting more information back. OK, um, and, and if that community goes quiet, uh, then it's a case of oh, it's hard work to keep on sharing, keep on sharing, and we're not getting any feedback. We're not getting any questions. People aren't growing. So how do we keep going? OK. So we also at this stage, we start going into organizational factors on, on how do we motivate? How do we how do we get people to to buy in and want to change? And we certainly see again, Hisham, I, I keep contributing to your thing as one of the most critical success factors is this culture. Uh, provides rules for behavior in the organization. So if we want to share knowledge, if we want to have shared understanding and behavior, it's it's now moving into a cultural type of, of scenario, moving out of change and into culture. And if we're not getting our culture right, we can have another uh, challenge where we're sitting on this area. OK, so I'm hoping you can see that this uh, takes a bit of effort. We're looking at the facilitation, first of all, individual facilitation and well as corporate facilitation. OK. So I do I do feel that um, we we sort of it's nice from a cultural point of view to get individuals work with those small teams, get them excited, get them going. And so slowly but surely individuals share with others and we start to develop a culture of, of this process. OK, and of course, this is why I feel that it, it can get so hard. Yes, we understand why, but the actual change can take a long time. OK. It's not easy to now get through these different issues and, and sort it out, especially when as data management managers and professionals, we're expecting people to already be there, but, but that's not where they're at. All right, so this is a diagram that I really liked when I saw it the first time, and it was a diagram talking about knowledge management. So it, it's purely in the field of knowledge management, and you can see that they deal Again, similar to us in terms of information management or data management, we have to get some of the change management right first, uh, and then we can go into knowledge management. So trying to get people, trying to sort out our knowledge before we've got the change, I think is also a bit of a waste of time. OK. All right, so let's see how this, this one grows. And this is the, so you can see here these different circles of the Venn diagrams involved in this we've got human resources we've got information management we've, here we've got the information and communication the ict technology it side and then we've got organizational learning so how well are we learning as an organization um, and they may be quite far down the road in terms of standard operating process procedures for pure business but when it comes to information management then they may not have any of that stuff OK, I, I haven't seen many organizations. I, I do see some knowledge knowledge managers around um, in terms of doing that lessons learned, uh, applying after action reports. I, I'm, I haven't been in too many organizations where this thing's really flowing and pumping, but I'm hoping with the advent of things like an agile and scrums and guilds and things like that, that this starts to develop a lot better. So. We must certainly look at Agile and that to help us get through these areas. OK, so I've removed knowledge management out of the center. I believe we sit with change management, and this is taking us from a level zero to a level two. You can see there. Um, and we are moving up what we refer to as almost as that ADCOT. OK, awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. And if I highlight those areas, this is the area of change management. Um, here we're going into more of the ad hoc performance management, staff development, education and training. Can you see these relate to knowledge and ability? Um, and then we've got all of our reinforcement or our standard procedures. So just there, just getting to this level, uh, I'm hoping you can see the connection to repeatability. Getting our procedures defined. Can you, we starting to create a community of practice? 
We've got content management. We've got a level of enterprise search with our metadata. We've got policies and procedures defined. Or we, we're getting them in place. We have to operationalize them. And we're now starting to build the processes. OK, then this next step is once we've got that defined, now it's all about getting rid of the waste. Um, and I, I just know that the number of times I've been through policy and procedure definition, that getting all the procedures defined, it's we know, and I, I know for know it that yes, I've done a certain amount of procedure definition, but the ability to uh, have waste in those and and what happens in the real world as we apply it, this gets harder and harder. Okay, so how do we? How do we then get the efficiency, effectiveness, and innovation? And then if I just go back a little bit to the to the metrics and, and that scenario is, um, for, as we've got them defined, we can now start to measure our processes. So we finally got to a point where we can measure it. When we asked to get perform, when we asked to perform a deliverable, like a data strategy, the clock starts to tick. We measure all the different steps that we go through when we're following the process. We can see in some cases where we stop and wait or things don't go as well as we want to. And in our after action report, when we come back, we should be saying, uh, I spent so much time doing this, wasted this, waiting for this, doing that. And these are the areas that I can improve on. So it's about getting efficiency and starting to get the KPIs going. OK, so it's not just measuring. We're now wanting to almost look at how do we improve and setting improvement goals. And those improvement goals start to talk to uh, being more efficient. So uh, actually the increasing the, the quality of the deliverable from a business point of view. So we don't have mismatches between what the business asked for, what are they getting, um, it's meeting the business requirements. We don't have to go and have another sprint or another iteration to get the final thing working as far as the business is concerned, the quality issues, the errors. We we should have resolved a lot of these things. So that's that's a lovely place to be. That's a fantastic, uh, fantastic arena to operate in. It's really uh, engaging. Um, and but it's what it's now doing is it's, it's working on our knowledge management areas, which are behaviors, lessons learned, decision support, efficiency benefits. When people start to see this, this is where we, we start to develop. OK, and from getting these best practices up in place now, where we've, where we've removed the efficiency, we start uh, being able to operate on our effectiveness. And when we have that continuous improvement, now we're looking at areas of innovation and transformation within the business uh, in, in that leg. OK, so for me, this whole thing of explaining to people why it's happening focuses on change management and knowledge management. And and maybe I can just pause here for a while and, and allow. I know Hisham had some comments on culture. I'd love to hear your, your feedback. Um, so Hisham, you, you, you talk about a behavioral assessment. Uh, that is correct. Um, and that's part of uh, engagement. So let me just read your, your message. It can be used to evaluate behaviors and attitudes uh, in relation to data management. Correct. Potentially this will help identify gaps. Let's say uh, we've identified data literacy. We can tailor a training program that uh, improves data literacy. Yes. So I, I actually like to see data literacy as a use case that we would implement uh, with an ROI, uh, and then we run that as an initiative. So we use data literacy as an initiative, and it contributes, and but it never ends. One of those things it will it will continue to operate, but it's about getting our data literacy uh, operationalized. So go through a process of operationalizing data literacy and and being able to score and measure. We also have a readiness assessment, Hisham. Uh, where we look at, uh, do we believe our organization is ready? Do we believe that people are ready? Capabilities, that's also an assessment that we can use. Is that is that what you're referring to as well? Yes, yes, that's that's pretty much is is 
not only we're going to assess the data maturity part, we're, we're yes. trying to assess the culture itself, how, how people yes. are willing to accept that change. Because when you talk with anyone about change, you will get resistance. Why would I, right. why you're pushing me to more out, outside of my comfort zone, for example? Why do you want me to adopt this? So unless I put a materialized benefit in front of anyone that I talk to, they, they can see the benefit, you wouldn't get the buy-in and therefore you will get the resistance. Right. And and so this this actually talks to this level called desire. That's where we pick up resistance. That's where we need a resistance plan. Um, and and in, I'm hoping you're in agreement with that. We that, remember I said there's, uh, there's those different inhibitors of change um, being engagement. And I, I know from listening to Christine and that is that this engagement is, is relatively tricky to measure uh, for example, they have a, a stakeholder or a manager's engagement level. So, so how engaged are they during meetings? How engaged are they during a community practice or, or even a retro? You know, are, are they contributing? Are they are they are constantly encouraging people to change and helping them move across uh, across this uh, transformation, which I'll give a little bit later on. Okay, so I'm hoping I'm I'm hoping that I I'm not coming across as all you need is change management and knowledge management to get from a level zero to a level uh, three. You 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 certainly need. I mean, knowledge management is great in that it talks about training, it talks about capabilities, it talks about making your knowledge explicit. So taking implicit knowledge and making explicit knowledge. So we have to get things written down, defined, uh, and things like that. But we still need all of the data management professional skills to be able to do the work that they need to do and to meet the data strategy as it sits. So for example, if they want to tackle some AI things and we don't have that, um, yes, it would be nice to train our people, but they will not have all the experience to be able to take it into good practice and elements like that. So we'll need to get people in, either bring in consultants uh, or bring in uh, people that have years of experience in the field and the capability that we need to have, and then allow them to start driving the community of practice. Okay, and this is sitting in this repeatable reinforced area over here. Okay, Paul. Any any comments from your side? Uh, you know, this is something that we 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 need to focus on with lots of our customers because they're sitting below that level three. This becomes the core the core focus. Yeah, hard. I think I I was mentioning it in the presentation I did on Tuesday. In that, it's, you know, the, we're embarking on an uncomfortable exercise when we come in into the organization with the DMMA and it can come across as so offensive because you if you don't word smith yourself properly as you yeah. mentioned up front you know guys I'm not saying that you can't do this um please I'm not you, you emphasize that in this talk it's the same kind of thing that you've got in this change and this knowledge management is so so important to help people just get through that that barrier right great all right, so so this is what I've done, um, and and remember remember on our let me and I'd, I'd like to just take you back to that uh, Excel spreadsheet just to show you again in terms of of um, how it works. If you remember this Excel spreadsheet, it's there. We're going to do the assessment, yeah. and, if, and if we open up the assessment. Can you see uh, here are all the activities and uh, next to each deliverable when we go through a deliverable, let's open up for a deliverable. We can say ah, this one is at this stage. It's sitting at an ad hoc level. OK, now I interview maybe uh, 15 people 
uh, we'll have a combination of anywhere from unaware. Um, and what we're asking them is, do you know how to create a data strategy? Are we following a process? Do we have a set of outcomes defined? So we'll have anywhere from unaware to uh, defined and managed. That That's sort of where I'm seeing. Okay, so when we average it out, we will start to position our average score into these areas over here. Okay, so when I say it's at a level zero, that would mean that all 15 people said they're completely unaware of a data strategy. Now, there are organizations like that. JG and I did one uh, the other day, one of uh, another company that they're just embarking on this thing and they don't have a data strategy. Okay, we may have one or two that said, yeah, I've got this in my head is, is where I'm going, but a name market higher. But typically when we average that out, you you may get a level zero. Okay, and so what I've recommended here is anything between a level zero and a 0 0.4, we are going to tackle these areas, these deliverables by communicating. And depending on the level, we're either going to have an awareness communication or what we talk about is that readiness, desire scenario. OK, now at this point in time, our knowledge type, so we, we're not even into the <laughs> into the KM world, we, we missing. All right. So as far as the organization is concerned, this is missing. This this doesn't exist. So this is my mapping now. What you can do is in your spreadsheet, you can change these settings. All we're saying is that you've got to go from awareness to desire the ADCAR frame, which is organizational change management. This is the progress that you need to take along, and you can see the scores that I've allocated. Now, I don't have any fixed, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of doing this by experience, and, we, and we're getting feedback, and we're presenting back to the business and saying, do you believe your challenge is awareness here? OK, so this is my thing. I score it like this and I say it's awareness. Then someone says, yeah, but, you know, I actually think that we have a bigger problem in terms of desire. And then one would have to adjust that with the uh, the data management team and adjust these levels. So just maybe to pause here, JG, Paul, Hisham, uh, those that have done this type of thing, are you, are you seeing the, the mapping level that I've got? So this is now taken what we normally present just as a radar diagram, and there's data value realization sitting at a level zero. Um, now, now I'm giving you an approach to tackle this thing and, and take it through. Does that is it making sense? Thanks, Howard. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, JG. Then I carry on, Paul. But um, just I, no, I think it's because it 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 starts to piece together. If I could do the discussion of that group in Saudi that came at me because the DMMA yes. they said was not. Yes. If I could redo that <laughs> now, uh, I right. would. <laughs> I was just backpedaling then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying right. to keep the guy calm to say, listen, I'm here to help you, but if if um, if we could do this all over again and follow this, shucks. I think it would have been. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't have had that all of a sudden charge yeah. at me like a, yeah. a red hot bull. Sorry, uh, JG. No, not not at all, Paul. Um, you know, in my experience, Howard, we we looked to try this on an SME where we knew that the capability would be low because there's multi hatting all over and they're growing yes. tremendously fast, etc. So what what uh, you know, we we went to great length to to make sure that they didn't feel ostracized by the results. But what I quite like about this is um, we, we're just going to focus on communication. We, we, yeah. We're in awareness and desire. And don't try and be anywhere else. Just be there. It's actually fine. So yeah. I think that, um, uh, you know, and I think that there's this construct, and I remember one of the executives saying, oh, you know, I was quite disappointed with our DMMA score. I'm like, I'm not sure whether that's the right response. It's what's important yes. is to know where you are, because right. where you are informs what actions are appropriate. And I think this table summarizes that quite nicely. So I would have 
um, this table helps. Would I, would, like Paul would have tried, done something different. I would have done something different too. I would have said to the SME, perfect. We're just gonna so we're gonna use yeah. communication as the most effective mechanism. And for right. the for the, the exec, I would have said, absolutely. Now we're in a capability build. Isn't that amazing? Like this is where we yeah. are. How awesome! Right. That's, Thanks, Howard. That's, that's okay. Great. Hishem, I'm not, I'm not sure if I understand your question. What is deemed as a good average rate for a business that already has a maturity of zero, for example? So my question is like, let's assume that we already know that the maturity level for that business is 0 0.5, for example. Right. What is deemed good for them? Like if, if I say, OK, you, you oh. scored 1.9, what does that mean to them? OK, OK, I, I like that question. So let's say uh, and let's take this through. If if my averages be go between zero and zero four, then as JG was talking about, uh, we are saying that most of your people have marked it as unaware to get to that average. Uh, the vast majority is saying they're unaware of this deliverable uh, what it's all about, where there's procedures and stuff like that. They, they're unaware. So let's have almost a brown bag session and, and we teach them about the deliverables and we explain uh, what these deliverables are and, and what procedures we're going to be putting together and, and almost like a an emerging practice definition. So that's the way I would tackle these different departments that continually say, I don't know. I, I've never, I've never even heard of this thing. I've never been involved in a project that does it. I've never created a data strategy. I haven't seen one. Um, and we had that scenario in one of the ministries where they, where they had a, a, a great digital strategy. It was something like 250 pages. It took me about four, four days to go through. And whenever we spoke to anybody, they said, never heard it, never seen it, don't even know what it's all about. So there it would be, let's talk about what a digital strategy does and, and how it can help you and what the benefits are and, and almost that, that lifting up the awareness. If you're sitting between the desire, then it's that engagement that you were talking about, Hisham. We, we should be focusing on our readiness and our willingness and our resistance plan. That's, that's what where we should be working at when, we, when we've got this, this area. And as we progress, it's knowledge, then ability and reinforcement to uplift the capability. Does that does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, great. So I'm what I'm desperately trying to do is is explain why, why, and, and then provide them with a tool to get out of that, get out of that area, that that um uh, depressing area of being there forever and ever. Because as as you also point out, is if I don't improve this design, we keep having resistance. Bob's Bob's truth. Next time you do the assessment, you back there, and yeah, all the data governance people are saying, "Yeah, but we're doing all this work," and I'm saying, "Great, you're doing it, but people don't want it." So that's 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 our challenge. Okay, then I go to the next level, which is from defined to optimizing. And I'm hoping you can see here is is now it's about by getting shared understanding. We're now transitioning from change management to knowledge management. We should have an explicit definition of our P3T policies, procedures, and processes. We we need to be explicit. So now we've got them from nowhere, uh, but we've got them down. So we've got the principles, policies, and procedures defined and we're building our reference architecture so we have become explicit now in my review of the knowledge management uh progression they they basically saying that you know that we we sort of moving away from a lot of this thing of documenting and things like that it's more about conversation learning in public transparency user control and i'm saying that's great i, I like this collective thing but Please let's understand we've got to get some level of explicit definition down so that we can start making BAU standard operating procedures and we can start to improve and, and work along this thing. Okay, so, so this is that next step of, of where we keep going. So P3Ts, I get it down. Then 
once I've got P3Ts, I'd like to get a community of practice. I'd like to have a group of people that own the metadata processes and they talk to anybody who's interested in metadata and they help people build taxonomies and things like that. Um, and and grow the everybody involved in that grow this this excitement and reason and what we're wanting to do is we would like them to own the procedures okay so if we think of a retro we we should be having the the lead of the community of practice for metadata looking at how well they did metadata what they can improve where they're battling and so they start getting uh feedback and they start helping with tips and tricks they start helping with guidelines they start helping people to implement these procedures and and improve the procedures so so that's the approach and then we get business as usual so we get the team processes going um and then we and then we keep on going into more and more control by the community and not by driving data governance, driving the team. So we want a community established across the different areas. And yes, you are right, Marcel, it's, it's that keep circling back and to connect to the business value. So what, what we do believe is that we must grow business value. We must grow our maturity whilst we're delivering business value. Um, if you, Marcel, if you've seen our talk on data value driven management, we like to add the burden of policies and procedures to delivering value, to delivering data products. So we shouldn't have a group of people that sit on the side for four months and just do uh, policies and procedures. We need to bring the two together. And so we have to have this balance of carrying a bit of the burden to get us there as well as delivering value. And we shouldn't be uh, just all policies and procedures development, unless there's a regulator that's saying, you got to get it done by next week or next month. Uh, now you got to get, get going. Okay. Marcel, does that answer your question? Yes, I would just continuously to, to bring back the, the deliverable to show business. Okay, I'm doing this and this, this is how it improves your business, and this is what you're getting out of doing it. So what we've done a little bit since you left is we, we split out the enterprise responsibilities like creating strategies and and the data models and all that from um, the stewardship function. And, and we identify that as an enterprise capability that you need to develop so that the stewards can use that to implement um, data models within the organization and stuff like that. So, and then right. when you have a data model, then you connect it to a, a business value to see, all right, this is the limit, this is how, this is what I'm, me as a business user, get out of having that in place. Fantastic. Excellent. Yes, you, I don't think you can ever stop that uh, data value discussion or the ROI on all of this work that you're doing. Uh, and, and so we have to keep that message going. So this is um, a little bit of what I've done now is basically given that an inhibitor, the name, I've named the inhibitor from zero to zero four, it's lack of awareness. What is our resolution? Understanding the business need to change, to deliver. And remember, it's, it's by deliverable. So what do we need to change when it comes to a data quality expectation or a data model or a data strategy or a business glossary? What is our need to change? And that should be focused. The focus should be a communication plan. Uh, when we have that lack of desire, people must want to participate and engage. OK, uh, it's, so it's the resistance plan, the communication plan and a sponsor roadmap. These are the, the things that we should be working on. For the ones over here, we get into a coaching plan and a training plan and then an adoption plan. How are we going to adopt all of this? We then focus on our community of practice, business, un business as usual, opera 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 operationalization. Um, we then got uh, level three is shared understanding and behavior efficiency, effectiveness and transformation. So 
as we go along this process, we, we keep on adding more and more elements to more and more focus. Now, what I did want to show you is um, when I did the review, so if I just share this with you, uh, I want to go to my Power BI. OK, so here is the Power BI of the assessment. And can you see now is with my ratings, I can say we've got 16.55% of my deliverables uh, that have challenges with respect to communication, that sort of uh, awareness and desire. We can see most of them are sitting at desire level. Then we've got 65% of our delivery sitting at, at uh, capability. And here we go, knowledge, um, ability, reinforcement. Um, and we can see most of them are sitting at an ability point of view. So we, what we are saying here is that our people don't feel confident that they can complete the deliverables themselves. Okay. They, they may have been on some training, but they don't feel comfort and comfortable to do it. We then go into shared understanding and partnership. Now, what I just want to warn here is that when I get these deliverables, this 16.5% into this area, this is now going to grow to uh, 65 plus 16. We, we're basically sitting on 81% of a capability issue. And when we take all of that, we'll then go into these different levels. So um, I've, I've got to transition all of these across this ad car cycle. And so this was my key challenge analysis of the results. We're basically saying here are my, from a knowledge area, um, communication challenges, uh, awareness and desire on data handling ethics. Uh, a lot of it, this was interesting, is a lot of it we're battling with in terms of data models. Data models had the lowest amount of awareness of most of these deliverables, which I found uh, quite interesting. Uh, and now you can see all the different uh, aware or communication challenges that we have per knowledge area. Of course, we can drill down to a deliverable, but they, they're now summarized. We then come up into a capability, and we see that data quality is the one that has the biggest challenges with respect to capabilities. Okay, um, and we keep on going, and then we have a consistency issue. So this is by consistency. So it's getting our community of practice for data governance, which is what I found as well, is that the DG people saying, oh, but we've got all these things. We've done this, this, and this. And I'm saying, I get that, but that your people aren't coming with you. So what do we do? We should be setting up a community of practice. They should help you with this communication, with the training, with the guidelines, the mentoring, and they should help you get through here. Okay. And then we get into partnership and, and we can see on the partnership one, it's really data security that was sitting there. And I'm sure most of you see this across all the organizations is that data security is way out in front um, and people feel comfortable about the data security in general, but and and so that one's coming. Um, so so almost in a way we we can ignore it from a governance point of view and deal with all the others to to get through this challenge that we're facing. Okay. Um, so then, just in terms of sharing uh, closing out, these are back to our core challenges. Awareness, desire, knowledge uh, at the change level. Um, I wanted to just share with this in terms of managing the change curve. I like this understanding of focusing on this area. So can we see here, we've got this creative alignment, maximizing communication, sparking motivation, developing the capability, and then sharing the knowledge. This is how we get the people from this thing of why do we need to change? that shock and surprise and the fear and frustration to a point where uh, they are more positive, they're getting more involved, they're handling some of the decisions and they, they're working together on that process. Okay, so we, we need to take our people through this uh, journey. Here are the type of things that you can look at. Um, reaction, shock and denial, approaches, communication, um, 
anger and fear. Now this is <laughs> sort of where, where Howard Diesel falls short. I've got to watch, listen, and support. And then, I, then I'll, I'll hand it over to JG and Paul. Um, and then we go into this experiment where we have the acceptance, we get time to test and play around, and then we get into commitment and celebration. Okay, so that's that's the curve that we we have to be conscious of. It doesn't go away. People are going to need to go across this path, and we have to be patient with them. Of course, what what we are seeing in some cases is people help us jump almost from this frustration to decision by coaching and mentoring. And that's where I'd love to do that is people are saying, oh, I've got to fix this. I've got to do something about it. Okay, great. Let's let's get you across here before you're depressed. Once you're in, in the depressed mode, then that, that becomes harder for me. Okay, now we must also look at the knowledge. This is going to be the hard part. This is when you, when you need the knowledge managers involved. You need the retros going. And so here's really just a summary of the message that you need to tell to answer question two in terms of why are you here and what is it going to take to get you out of here? All right. So that is on time, 1800. And I'd like to stop here and, and maybe just take some questions and some some feedback in terms of what do you guys think? Is it is it something that you can include in your in your maturity assessment? Marcel, is this something that you've that you've been thinking about? What what we are trying to do is to to simplify it a little bit because um, with our you know we do a six monthly that dimension maturity assessment so yeah um, and the data stewards find it very difficult to apply the five level model um, um, in measuring the maturity of specific deliverables. So right. um, we are looking at, at reducing that to a, to a simpler model, um, but still we do the mapping from that simpler model to to the five uh, five level model. So we, I'm still in the development phases of that, but um, I, I must say we are advancing significantly quickly and the demand has increased um, significantly at this stage so um, all our major projects as data management implementation plans uh, we are overwhelmed with data strategy development for uh, specific business areas and um, we uh, we link the, the deliverables directly to to the business swats so right um, right and and um, that raised the 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 acknowledgement of the the importance of 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 data management to a senior level because the right. senior executives of the organisation were responsible for the business what's now you're right. bringing data directly to the business so you know now they're making that direct con connection and that's why i say you know keep on looping back to the business value and how you support the the business and and that made a significant change in in our in our maturity assessments and and our data strategy development process but okay. you can have all okay. off, offline chat a little bit about that Understand. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm sure that that sort of talking to that desire, if if the business people don't see the value and the need for change, that's going to bring them value, then they're not going to move along that path. Exactly. Yeah, I'd love to, that. I'd love to spend time with you on that. That's fantastic. Yes, Don, I can see your hand up. Thanks, Howard. Um, I recall a previous conversation in which I think you mentioned that getting from stage one to stage four and most institutions takes two years. Um, I, I know you've touched on this already, but uh, um, I wonder if, are there any, any beyond the, what you've said already, are there any principles around how you can accelerate how you go from stage one to stage four, where in a, where no. a group, apart from just the, the value, the demonstration of value and the other, the other things that you've mentioned today? 
It's a good question, Don. Uh, I think one of the one of the things that we did talk about, and and I, I certainly see that coming in in Saudi, is that stakeholder demand to get everybody up to that right level. That's that's a phenomenal push. I think that's the one that pushes us hard and 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 the fastest is when the stakeholders become adamant and dictate that this will happen. This is where we will be. There is going to be no excuse. And Don, I can see that in the way in which you work with econ data, you you demand that level of quality and and performance. Uh, and so it tends to be that stakeholders' commitment to achieve these levels and see that there's valuable in value in having well-defined data, good quality, easy to use, good representations, good visualizations, and things like that. Okay, great. Thank you. Good. Ross, I see you typing then. Howard, maybe just yeah. a, a, a statement to 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 Don with respect yes. to the speed. So, Don, one of the things that I've noted is when we're talking maturity assessments, it's the change management aspect is actually intrinsically related to some of the cultural detail within the business. And so some of the um, some of the latency is not as a result of things that we can do fast. It's actually um, an intrinsic property of the business in terms of that change. So, Don, I would say that one of the key illustrators of, of, of potential speed at which one can move between these levels is um, like a cultural, uh, it's a cultural legacy. Um, I don't know. You, JJ, you will find that the best people to change that culture and, and when they start saying uh, this is not acceptable, then this this uh, lack of of change or skills or situation that we're in when when the top people saying we have to change, I, I agree with you the culture must be worked on, uh, but when that message starts be, to become clear and and acceptable, then it it's it does have a, a speed up effect. Yeah. Um. I think even you, if we go back to your people, um, uh, JG, the, the first bunch that we worked with, you can see that they they recognize that they've got problems. There, there's that desire is there and, and your top people are in there wanting to get the change. The, the discussions are, are are really nice and and no one's really saying, but why do I need to do this? Why is it important? Would that be a correct statement, JJ? Have you, have you heard them ever say that? I, absolutely, Howard. I think that's correct. I think where they challenge is the competing demands and, yeah, and yeah. then it comes down to Right. We know we've Agreed. we've got we've got line of business stability versus our um, our aspirational data management goals, and then they trade. Um, right, and this is where we have to help them on on trying to bring the two together. That, as you say, we we can't just chase after the the business value, and then we leave the uh, the data management value. Correct. Yeah. Um, Don, maybe just. If you wouldn't mind, just the question: Have you got an example in mind that you is there a level of frustration coming from a speed issue that that two years that Howard referred to is that? How does that manifest in the clients that you're seeing? And and the reason why you're asking for a fast track option is what benefits and how do you see that manifesting for your clients? If you don't mind, Don. Um, well, I, I think something I've seen a couple of times where. Um, there's perhaps uh, there's, there's a low level of data maturity to start um, and um, not really a kind of a business impulse to um, uh, from stakeholders to um, to achieve a higher level of data maturity um, even over the medium term um, and so there's this kind of internal uh, uh, I guess it as a consultant, you know our role is not not just to um, to um, provide advice, but also to help um, help with a framework 
um, to help executives think about how to um, accelerate uh, kind of the, the achievements of their goals and build and and build a um, a framework for for getting use cases across the line and, and helping to mature the institution's maturity over time. Um, and so uh, I, it's something that I've seen a couple of times where um, and it, the executive may want um, may want advanced analytics projects delivered, but it's yeah, but, but yeah, the, the institution right. just doesn't have the have the, the the maturity for that to actually not not just uh, be implemented, but also kind of kept alive yeah. and, and an analytical capability um, mm. developed over time. And so there's this. There's a ten, there's this kind of tension between something being kind of top down and bottom up, um, and yeah. I guess my question relates to uh, what are the kinds of principles for things that can that can help um, advance it from a top down and bottom up perspective. And and Don Don, thanks for sharing that because this is sort of what we're trying to say now is that you. You could have the exec saying, "We have to get here," and they and they and they build an innovation hub, and we've got some really smart people in the innovation hub running ahead, but everybody's uh, behind. So we we got to bring the masses across the line, and and we've got to get a consistent usage. So yes, the the exec can certainly speed it up, um, but then there's also this making sure that everybody and and we applying the change and knowledge management process and not just having a select few that are way ahead of everybody else and and no one feels that they can ever get there i'd agree with that ross uh, you had a question uh you had a suggestion um maybe if you could just ask that ask go through that again uh it's Pretty much in line with what you've been discussing, but I was I was wondering whether you couldn't use roles as a way, I mean, tactically to to improve the data yeah, and right. security. So, yeah, so that's what uh, people have been establishing these guilds. Okay, and a guild would typically be at a knowledge area sort of, and and it would be led by your your specialists in those areas. So we'd have a data governance guild. Data management guild is too high. You want a data governance, data quality. So your core areas, you'd set up guilds. Uh, you'd have people who are the thought leaders in the organization that, that are responsible for those guilds. And anyone operating in that area uh, is encouraged to get involved and participate in that guild. And then, so there's that one-on-one -on -one sharing tips and tricks guidelines encouraging plus education um is that sort of what you're looking at ross well it's it's, it's maybe less than that because i mean we need to get the organization to in order to realize the the data value right um so i mean it's a case of uplifting but certain of the the roles are not going to require the, that effort I mean, it's just for me, it's a, do we always work to the lowest common denominator, you know, um, or is it sufficient to get 80% of the organization across, um, you know, in terms of also addressing the, the needs and concerns of, of the executives? Uh, you know, I'm just trying to eliminate, you know, certain roles and, and say, okay, uh, tactically, you know, we can de-emphasize or deprioritize, um, you know, maturing. Are you, talking, are you talking knowledge areas or roles? Which one are you talking? So I'm talking more about in terms of the data management or, or data um, management maturity across the organization, okay, and then using roles to uh, refine the, the focus and the target um so, so know, maybe because uh, i'm missing so you when you use the word roles so are you talking about a specialist or a or a uh a, a entry person or, or yeah I'm, I'm talking about the, the roles in the organization management uh, the workers um executives those those kind of roles 
um, that already exist within the organization. So, so help me there in terms of applying data, um, data management maturity uh, to management. Are you saying? Well, let's well, focus I mean, on data management. literacy and, 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 and I mean, you know, some of the workers, OK, essentially wouldn't need that the same level of of education. Um, I mean, just based on the role that they're performing we, and their contribution to the organization, you know. Let's let's remember their literacy is, is a tricky one because it's a continuum and you never end. So everybody gets and has to tackle and ensure that they've got all of the areas covered. Uh, so so when you do a data literacy assessment, you know, we, we can talk about things like uh, or what your data abilities are, and there will always be areas where you need to improve. So data literacy is applicable to everyone and not just a specific level of oh you need to be able to read data and then write data and then argue with data and then manage data you you need to grow and progress all the way um of course you may not need to get to the specialized uh data managing data because you you may really just stop at read write and argue um but so so there will be certain levels but the certainly the awareness so if we go back to the maturity assessment when you do the awareness it's all about identifying your stakeholder groups um, now that may be with respect to a, a role for example your executives and the people on the steering committee and the people on these different areas so that's what we refer to as stakeholder groups roles i'm, I'm not too sure about whether i'd use a role but a stakeholder group would then we would have a specific change plan for the different stakeholder groups like the execs like uh, business managers uh, and things like that and depending on where the commitment was to the change or to data management you would apply an appropriate change plan for those stakeholder groups oh okay okay Okay, that, that clears that up. So, and I mean, it's not necessarily the same um, evaluation is going to be applied throughout the organization. It will be applied differently and, and refined yeah, yeah. for the different stakeholder groups. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the Guild, is, as Marcel was talking about it, it is valuable. It does allow a certain amount of self-development, self-guidance, uh, mentoring, sharing that's happening within the organization. Um, and what, Marcel, what we like to do is, is almost a stake, uh, like a, a guild connect within, within a organization now connect to uh, groups uh, regionally and then internationally, right? So that they also have those sort of stretches and, and the ability to then move out from just being just only see what's been done in the organization to but also to see what's done nationally and and regionally and internationally um, to walk along that situation. Uh, and and you are right as to an extent you want to pull away from VG being completely responsible for this thing. It's you've got to get other people leading and running and, and going with it. Yes, Hisham. Yes, uh, sorry for the echo because I'm just doing the school run. So um, it, it's just a question and with regards to the speed and the delivery of, of those type of projects and, and, and the scale of that. Like I, I did hear before the terms of whether data governance or data management can be either invasive or non-invasive. Yeah, yeah. So, does that mean like when we when we have the desire at that stage where change management can help and we have a lot of desire in the business, therefore we can take the non-invasive route? And yes. If, if yes. we have, yeah. for example, a resistance in the business, now we need to adopt the invasive yes. uh, 
way. Yes. What, what I would, what I, I like to, to answer your approach, I, I always like to take two things into consideration, the level of maturity and the culture. Um, so in some cases, the, the culture is driven by uh, KPIs and, and, and rewards and, and things like that. And then non-invasive battles within that type of culture. My experience uh, that I've been in a regulatory environment, if you don't set targets, KPIs and things that people must perform to, they, they've got other work to do and, and it doesn't happen. But I, I do like what you're saying is, is once you start getting over the des past the desire and that ability uh, scenario, then the 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 approach of non-invasive becomes a lot more applicable, and I find it it works well, especially in that community of practice where where you don't have to have all these well structured defined things. People just get in there and contribute, and they're all there to improve metadata management. Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's uh, that's answered my question and kind of like resonate everything in my head. So thanks, uh, Howard. Yeah, I've I've tried that uh, that non-invasive, um, and and they say, oh, let's not do anything with it, and we we just wallowed around and and we couldn't get going. And when talking to the people, they said, well. You know what? I've got other work to do. So, so if you want me to do the work, then put it on my KPI. It's like okay. <laughs> so I, I, I just some cultures, some cultures don't buy that. Um, and I, I battled. Yeah, I have seen it before linked to performance. Um, in in some organization, so you will find people doing their best uh, to meet their, their targets. Yeah, whether yeah. they they gonna just I don't know it's like a coin with two face yes in front of it is <laughs> in front it of is, you, and, he and, be very supportive but in reality he's, he's yeah, just yeah, yeah. doing his best to resist right and and Hisham the other thing that um I've had long discussions JG, will with you open um, please not now JG so just maybe check I think later. it's Dudley <laughs> Just, just muting JG because Betsy's not opening the door. Um, okay, so we had this chat with with Marcel at one stage in terms of saying, yes, we got to do KPIs, but you can't do too many KPIs. And so, what what is? And I like the challenge that Marcel said. What is the one KPI that we should look at to to help us change this culture? Okay, so so we we have to be very careful of then just bombarding them with key performance indicators and, and stuff like that, and, and we don't get it. So I, I like this thing of find the one KPI that's going to make a difference and, and explain it properly and that people can respond to it. There's, there's the challenge on that KPI route. All righty, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for attending. It was it was great chatting to everybody. Uh, any sorry. any last comments, Paul? Sorry, I cut you off. I, I see you want to no, say something. No, 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 not at all. I just uh, something that been mulling in my mind since uh, Don's question about um, and you. I think you phrased it: uh, value to business versus value to data management. Yeah. Or the, and I was just wondering, like we talk about. You know, in, in DG, how to value, how to calculate value um, yeah. of doing a practice. How do we how do we calculate the negative, yeah. not doing it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And, the, and, so, and, Paul, the, and how do we calculate the cost of falling apart when fine we delivered yeah, yeah, yeah. and gave it exact his thing, but then next month is a cock up. Excuse my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. So there is a when you do some of these ROI and benefit uh, the cost analysis. Mm. Um, one of the one of the options that you should always do is the cost of doing nothing. What happens yeah. if we do nothing? That, that's yeah. always uh, part of the evaluation. You shouldn't sure. ignore that. And I, I like what you brought up there. And I always like doing it 
because it we have to we have to challenge people to say, well, what happens if we do nothing? What is it going to be? What does it mean yeah. to us? Sure. From a value point of view. Cheapest. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. But yeah, we can chat about that offline as well. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ross. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Cheers, everybody. Unless there's thanks, other everyone. questions. Thank you, Kent. Thank you very much. Cheers, Thank all. You. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers, cheers. Nice to see you guys on the side. Thanks, Bronwyn.